So it's essentially a diagram of showing the rocks coming out of the mine and then being processed all the way to what we call a concentrate. And so it's crushing up the massive rocks into the small, tiny rocks and then processing that. Mm. And so yeah, our technical term is a flow sheet. I don't know if there's... It's the journey of the rocks. Journey of the rocks, there we go. Remote controls, bed sheets, wind turbines, deodorant, and fairy lights. You might think I'm just listing random objects, but they all have one thing in common. They rely on minerals to even exist. Without minerals like copper and lithium, modern life grinds to a halt. But extracting them is costly for the environment. So the mining industry is under pressure to transform the journey of the rocks into one that the planet can sustain. This is Next Stop Green Business. I'm Maria Lindarlot with State of Green, and I'm on the road across Denmark visiting companies that prove climate action and competitiveness go hand in hand. From factories to service stations to sleek HQs, every stop brings a new perspective on why green business is good business. And I'm taking you along for the ride. Since industrial mines aren't exactly common in Denmark, I had to settle for a sleek Scandinavian wooden model mine at the red bricked headquarters of FLS in Copenhagen to explore the many conundrums of the mining business. Originally focused on cement, the Danish company FLS turned their attention to mining and minerals. And today, they're a global leader in full flow sheet technology, or as I like to call it, the journey of the rocks. To guide me through the journey, I was joined by sustainability manager Sam Warmerdam and head of public affairs Nora Amrani. Here's Nora explaining FLS's role. So if you have a picture of a mine, whether it's underground or open pit, we're not playing in that. We come right after. So once the rocks have been uh, extracted and you need to process them, so we do all the mineral processing uh, technologies. What this means is that FLS provides solutions that enable the crushing, grinding and cutting of rocks that are the size of a car to the size of a basketball and finally to something that's as fine as sand. They also provide the technology for the subsequent step of extracting the actual minerals. So, so I, I describe it as a, uh, getting into a jacuzzi. You mix the sand with water mm. and um, some chemicals and you will have bubbles and the valuable minerals will come on top. You can harvest it and then it goes through several baths like this. And that's how you basically uh, concentrate the um, mineral out or extract the mineral out of the rock. So that's what we do, The whole that whole process, which is very uh, um, energy intensive, yeah. water intensive. Now, it didn't take more than five minutes for Nor and Sam to mention the resource-intensive nature of mining. And there's really no way getting around it. Mining has a significant negative impact on the environment. But at the same time, there's no way around the fact that the demand for minerals is increasing. And for good reason, as Nor explains. You also have a lot of minerals in uh, everyday um, products. Um, you have many in your phone, your computer, and uh, probably uh, uh, higher on the political agenda at the moment, you also need it for uh, security, for military applications. Um, so the the demand for minerals will increase, uh, and it was, it was meant to increase because of uh, population growth, for example, but, uh, but with the energy transition, it's even more. Here's a fact that blew my mind a bit. To reach net zero by 2050, the world will demand around twice the amount of copper extracted by mankind over the past 3,000 years. So how does FLS work to ensure that the minerals we need to pave the road for a greener future are produced in a more responsible way? As Sam explains, the key is to focus on efficiency. We need more metals to make batteries, to make wiring, to electrify our world, which is what we need to do to convert the energy we consume from fossil fuels to electric from renewables, solar, wind, etc. And so all of this is going to take 
minerals, especially copper, aluminium, gold, lithium. And so the best way to do that is to obviously recycle is nice, but you can't recycle everything, extracting minerals as efficiently as possible. As part of their commitment to enabling mining operations with zero emissions and zero energy and water waste, FLS provides solutions that can offer energy efficiency gains of around 30% and the ability to recycle up to 95% of the water associated with mineral processing. And as Noor illustrates, with some simple math, such efficiency gains in mineral processing alone have a huge impact. I mean, just to talk about the mineral processing, um, it's the, this part of uh, crushing, grinding and cutting communition. Um, it's using, on average, 3% of global electricity. That's wild. So if our solution provides, on average, 30% um, efficiency, it's a back of the envelope calculation, but you know, you can just make an application, it's 1% of global electricity. In order for these efficiency gains to be fully realized, it's important that the solutions are tailored to the given mine. Because contrary to popular depictions, no mine is the same. Sam compares them to fingerprints and snowflakes. And as Nora explains, this is why FLS have specialized in the full set of technologies needed for the mineral processing stage. And that's what is very nice about uh, FLS and the fact that we have the whole set of technology. We can uh, offer the best combination mm. along the mineral processing. We can, uh, uh, considering the location of the mine, the challenges that it faces, um, the hardness of the rock or the type of rocks that you have, and we can tell you this is the best combination that will make most sense and that will um, um, allow you to have less energy use, less water use, and produce, uh, producing more. However, one challenge shared by most mines is the less than ideal reputation of mining as a resource hungry and unsafe industry. This is why sustainability for FLS is not just about providing green technology. By reducing energy use and water consumption, they're responding to key concerns from the local communities that are home to mines, as Nor explains. Right, so miners need to have this license to operate and uh, by um, using less resources in the location where they are has an impact on their license to operate. Mm. It's not the only aspect, but it's part of the uh, um, equation. So mines will have a hard time if they're not getting the approval of the local communities and if they can demonstrate that they are uh, having the least environmental impact, it will be part of the uh, answer for addressing the local communities' uh, questions mm -hmm. and concerns. These concerns can be serious. Mines are often located in water-stressed areas with scarce economic opportunities, meaning that people's livelihoods are potentially on the line if the industry doesn't get it right. And for FLS, this makes the stakes of bettering the mining industry go beyond enabling the green transition. There is really a need for uh, uh, as many miners as possible to adopt best practice and um, offer opportunity and be committed, committed to offer opportunities locally. And hopefully we will hear more positive examples of uh, responsible mining and how people benefit from it, um, beyond the just, we need them for the energy transition. Yeah. So but it's a, it's a long journey and it's not, uh, it's a bumpy one. Uh, we need it, right, for the energy transition, but the industry needs to be accountable and uh, there should be no uh, free riders. Considering the many complex challenges associated with mining, it makes sense that when I asked Sam and Noor to describe the FLS sustainability journey in just one word, they went with learning. And one of the key lessons is how sustainability can be a lever for competitiveness. Allowing, listening to our customers and what they're wanting, and also understanding from our employees as well, because often you have people on the ground who see everything in a different way to what people in the head office do, for example. 
But yeah, it's also just for competitiveness as well. If you don't innovate and improve, someone else will and will be able to push you out of your market space. As we stand and look at the sleek model mine at the headquarters of FLS, it's clear that the competitive advantage of producing efficient and durable solutions is ultimately felt by the customer. Our products lower the total cost of ownership. And so what that means is that the products last longer, so you don't need to replace them as much. They don't break down as much, so you have less downtime. And for miners, you see this whole chain of equipment. If you have a break in the chain, that stops everything upstream and downstream, and so that costs them a lot of money. And so a lot of what we do and what we focus on in improving is works for our customer's bottom line. With their commitment to innovation and efficiency, FLS is refining the journey of the rocks and carving out a path for other companies to follow, proving that even the most resource-intensive industries can evolve to meet the challenges of the green transition. It's not a walk in the park, so if, uh, if you want an easy uh, uh, yeah, job in a way, uh, that's not, uh, that's not the, the sector to, uh, to get in. If you want to make a difference, there are so many opportunities. And that's what is uh, uh, at least attracting us to this sector and hopefully more people in the future who, wants to make a, who want to make a, a, a difference. Thanks to Noor and Sam for taking me on the journey of the rocks. We've been deep in the underground with FLS. And next time, we'll look at what's happening on the surface. That's at our next stop, Hempel. Thanks for listening.